everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. I'm Camilla Cleghorn. Today we're taking a look at Dog Span. I mean, Dog Park. <laughs> <laughs> Dog span? Well, wingspan, dogs. Oh, uh, yeah. I get it. Which a lot of people will. I'm not going to be the only person to say I, that. I was. Cause, I, I thought it, yeah. Because the popularity of wingspan, being such it is, is also a white thing, a white box. But this is about a much better animal than birds. That's debatable. Let's that be is honest. not debatable. No, that, is, that is factual. <laughs> okay. Some yes. of us love dogs. I really like dogs. I like and dogs. I actually. I did not know birds. there was this many breeds of dogs. I mean, I learned a yeah. lot just by going through all the cards because every single card in this game shows a different dog. Um, you're walking dogs in this game. And, uh, well, how do you do that? Tell us. <gasps> tell us, Camilla. I think I'll tell you. All right, in Dog Park, players are going to be competing to get the most reputation as the best dog walker in the neighborhood. They're going to do that by recruiting different dogs into their kennels, taking them on walks through the park in order to ultimately, again, gain the reputation and the resources needed to walk the dogs next round as well. This will be played over a series of four rounds. Each is going to be separated by a at-home phase where we kind of reset and get ready for the next round. And each round is set into three different phases, a recruit, a select, and a walk. But first, let's finish setting up here for this three-player game. Everyone's going to be dealt two objective cards, one experienced and one standard. You'll read them, select one, save it for your personal end game scoring opportunity, and return the other to the box. And with that, we are ready for our first recruit phase. During the recruit phase, players are going to bid or put at stake their reputation here to bring different dogs into their kennel and ultimately, hopefully, be able to walk them. To do that, you're going to look at the available dogs down here and figure out which one you want, taking into account their breed here, the working, pastoral, gun dog, hound, so what kind of dog they are, as well as if you have the resources or think you're going to have the opportunity to get the resources to be able to walk them and any special ability that they might have. So for example, let's take a look here at the Great Swiss Mountain Dog. The Great Swiss Mountain Dog is a working dog, which is going to be up here, the highest breed expert category for this game. These are randomized during setup. It's going to require two sticks in order to be able to take him on a walk. And he is very sociable, meaning during final scoring, you're going to gain one reputation for each breed category represented in your kennel. So if you bring this one into your kennel, you're going to kind of want to try to look to get a whole lot of, or as many as possible, of the different breeds so that he can be extra sociable. The Australian Shepherd here, he's a pastoral dog, a ball hog, as you can see. During final scoring, gain a reputation for each leftover balls assigned to this dog. So through the game, you're going to find opportunities to assign balls to him. And for a max of six, you'll gain one reputation for each ball that he has been able to hog. In player order, everyone is going to decide which dog they want to hopefully recruit into their kennel, and they will stake their reputation at it. So as the red player here, let's say that I want to go for the great Swiss mountain dog here, and I really want that dog because I want to go for a very wide um, appeal here in my, in my kennel. I want to have a couple different kinds of dogs, so I'm going to stake three reputation on that. I will place my bid, put it down, and take my lead worker and place it here to show everyone that I'm going to go for that dog. In player order, everyone else will make their bids as well with their reputation, like so. Once this is done, we will resolve the bids to see what dogs are recruited by whom. So for example, here, if you are uncontested, as the yellow player is here, they would turn it over, they would spend those reputations. So he spent two reputation in order to recruit the Australian Shepherd, and he would add it to his kennel. Both the red and the green player here went for the great Swiss mountain dog. So they are both going to reveal. And as you can see, the red bid three and the green bid one. So the red would win the great Swiss mountain dog adding to the kennel. And this should have been removed when they took that shepherd dog. After that, anybody that has lost bids and no, does not have a dog will choose from the remaining dogs left. In this case, green would end up with the mastiff. We will do this process one more time. First, refilling according to the player count, the number of dogs available here, making our bids, spending the reputation. We'll say it looks something like this, spending the reputation in order to recruit a dog. And let's say that as the red player, I want this Weimaraner. And these would have gone to the other two players as well. So to fi finish this, this recruit phase here, we will put out the 
dogs for the next round, but we'd only recruit two dogs each round. And with that, we're ready to go into the select phase. During the select phase, players are going to look at the dogs in their kennels and decide who they want to walk. So if I want to walk the great Swiss mountain dog, I will need to have two sticks in order to take him on the walk here. And once I place them in the resources here, I will put him on his lead to show that he is ready to walk or going on a walk. And I also have the available resources here to walk the Weimaraner. So I'm going to put that there and again, pay the two resources and put him on a lead as well. My lead walker is now ready to go in the park and start the walk. Once everyone does this, we'll look something like this and be ready to start the walk phase. During the walk phase, players can move one to four spaces and they will collect the resource of whatever space they land on. Players can never move backwards, but they can land on the space of another player. If they do this, they do not get the location bonus unless they spend a reputation to get it. On some of the spaces out here, you'll see this action right here, which is swap. If you have dogs down in your kennel, you will not in the first round unless you don't walk one, but you can land here and swap one of the dogs from your kennel for one of the ones that are down here in the field. So if, for example, we were later in the game and I had something like this, I could take and switch out this Australian Shepherd, perhaps for this Hungarian wire-haired Vizsla and add that one to my kennel. If you see this icon, this is gonna be the scout icon. And that one, you can reveal, reveal the top two cards of the deck and take one of those and replace it with one in the field. Play will continue like this with the players moving one to, one to four spaces, making a choice of which direction they want to go here, gaining the resources or the reputation until they ultimately leave the park. When they leave the park, they will go in player order on the track right here. The first player, depending on player count, in this one, it's a three player game, would gain two reputation. It is to note that the last player to leave is forced to leave. They do not get a final, you know, go to pick everything up on the way. And they are the last out of the park, which costs them one reputation. So we've finished our walk now, and we're going to go into the home time. All players during this home time will gain two reputation for any dogs that were walked this round. So for example, here, red would get two, four, taking them to eight. And I assume the other ones would as well. So we'll take them up like this. You will lose one reputation for any dogs that do not have a lead on them down in the kennel. So for example, here, if red was like this, they would lose two points. The dogs that were walked will return down into the kennel and everyone retrieves their walker lead. At this point, we're ready to set up for the next round. We will remove these tokens from the location bonus that were done during setup, reveal a new one, set out the new bonuses. That's a juicy spot, you get two there. And this one's gonna be a big old nothing. The current forecast is gonna be flipped over because it is no longer available. The round tracker is going to be moved into the next phase. A bird's upside down. There we go. And the first player token will move to the next person. Play is going to continue like this through four rounds, at which point we will trigger end game scoring. But I do want to talk about a couple things that you're going to keep in mind during the round. I had, I had walked these two dogs during that round, both of which have final scoring abilities. So not too much to keep in, in mind during round outside of the selection or I'm sorry, the recruitment phase. However, some dogs have a, a walking ability. When walking, whenever you scout, you can immediately swap. So you can look and replace one here and then immediately swap one of those into your kennel. There's going to be other ones, for example, here. Uh, go fetch. When walking this dog, whenever you would gain a ball, you also gain a stick. This one is similar. When walking this dog, whenever you would gain a ball, gain an additional ball. So as you're walking through, you're going to want to take a, or keep in mind the dogs you're walking and what special abilities are activated. Each round also has a forecast card up here, which is gonna change the round a little bit. So during that first dummy round that we went through during selection, gain two reputation for each hound you place on the lead. And these are going to vary. During the home time, dogs without the 
walked token lose two reputation instead of one. So as the game goes, these are other things to keep in mind. But once we go through this phase four times, we go into our final home phase here in which we will do final scoring. Players will tally together their park reputation that they've already earned during the game. Any of the dogs that have final scoring abilities will be tallied up here as well. So during final scoring, gain a reputation for each breed category represented in your kennel. You will have eight, but if it did look something like this, that would be one, two. But more realistically, an end board is going to look something like this with some walk tokens out there as well. Let's say that I was not quite able to get everything out there, but I didn't do too bad. So now here again for this great Swiss mountain dog, gain a reputation for each breed category. We have one, two, three different breed categories. So that'd be three points. This one here, the Weimariner during final scoring gave two reputation for each gun dog. So that'd be two, four, six. So you'll go through and do each of your final scoring from the dogs in your kennel. Players will also look at their personal objectives that they selected at the beginning of the game and score those if they were able to meet them. And finally, one reputation for five resources remaining. So not a great trade off there, but you can do get something. Quick note, I did forget the breed expert scoring as well. This is going to be scored by players who have the most dogs in their kennel within each of the categories. So if you have the most working dogs, you're going to score eight points, the most pastoral dogs, seven, so on and so forth. In this, ties are friendly. So if two, two people tie for the most terrier dogs, they both get six reputation. And with that, the highest reputation wins the game. This game is actually a lot simpler than I thought it would be. You it know, because you look at all the, there's like a, there's, I don't remember how many different dogs are in here, but there's a lot of different dogs. There's a bunch of stuff going on Whoa. here. Oh, Sorry, I was, I was actually just moving that out of the way so I could get to this. There's um, 163 dogs, and that does not include exactly the extra Kickstarter ones that we threw okay, in the box. Yeah, yeah. And they're all different, but they're not all different. There's no. a lot of dogs that do the same thing. The whole, right. the whole category does the same thing, right? If I'm not mistaken. Usually. So there's actually there not that many different things. There's the different categories of and classifications of dogs. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, but the... like all of the, the you, you see the same effect over and over and over and over oh, again okay, in the yes, game. Actual you know, the effect, same ability, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. which is where this game immediately starts to suffer from that unfortunate comparison to Wingspan. Mm -hmm. Wingspan is simply a superior game, in my opinion. Obviously, this is what you're going to be hearing here. I'm not going to compare them anymore other than that. I'm going to compare them for the rest of this review, <laughs> folks, okay? I don't, Let I don't, me count the ways. I think they look the same, but I think they're different. I think Dog Park is a family game. It's much okay, simpler yeah. with yes. the caveat that this track that Z keeps pawing. Because, yes, <laughs> yes, yes. Um, that is something that's not in a lot of family games. Basically, you right. can move a certain amount of distance, mm -hmm. and then you have to decide, am I going to go on to get points at the end here, mm -hmm. or am I going to try to get more resources? Mm -hmm. And that's a, I think that's, that's actually my favorite part. I like that track a lot. That's probably my yeah. favorite part, too, actually. Um, and it has a little bit of that push-your-luck element, you know, because you don't want to be the last one out of the park, but mm -hmm. you want to get as much as possible, and so you're trying to also read your the other players a little bit as well. Um, I really like that kind of push your luck, play the table kind of element to it. Now, there's all these cool dogs in here, and I like that a lot. I think the art in this game is top notch. I really like the art of the dogs. It does, for me, fall into the trap that I fall into some of these games. I mean, my kids did this, where I was picking dogs based on how much I liked that breed. 100%. Over <laughs> whether it was a, or over whether it was a good fit for my combinations or not. <laughs> That's a tough thing. I'm like, I really want the St. Bernard. Yeah. You know, I want the St. Bernard, but I really should be picking a different dog. Right, right. Uh, I don't think I had that problem. That's because uh, you hate dogs. <laughs> no, I don't hate dogs. I was playing the game. <laughs> I'll be reviewing the game today, folks. If you want to hear about the artwork and, and the various <laughs> dogs, these two will fill you in mm -hmm. on that. Go ahead, guys. Talk about the dog. No, no, I, I'm done. I think the artwork's great. I think it's I they think, did a good selection. I think you were talking about the powers and how you know they do get kind of repetitive. They do. And I, I, I and I can definitely see that, but I think that's kind of what keeps this in the family game category right. instead of elevating it up to more welcoming or, or even a little bit more advanced. And so I think for this, for being a base game, mm -hmm. I kind of like that design choice. Mm -hmm. That it was, it is very streamlined, and it's not that like you only have two or three. I mean, you're still talking ten to twelve different ones. So I thought that it was a really good balance of 
you kind of get to know it and you can get into your your groove you yeah. know um without being overwhelming every single card i mean 126 different powers or dog special abilities would definitely kick it out of that family category mm -hmm. and and then i mean you don't go through all the cards either so you wouldn't get to not, see all those great not synergies. even a little no and There's so i so think many. i think that again keeping it that smaller number of special abilities means that you can get into those synergies because if you're going through this many of this many cards the two that work great together might not ever come up in a game. Yeah, no, that's true. That's true. Um, so when you when you play this game, I, another thing I like though is again the dogs. You're picking a dog based on its ability. You're yeah. picking a dog based on can you walk the dog. Right. Yes. And then the breeds are different points at the end of the game. Yes. And that again, I think that's a clean way of doing it. And it's. Like I said, that going down the walkway feels like a more complex thing. They stuck into a cleaner game. Mm -hmm. this but again, thing? yes. But I don't mind that. The only thing is, you look at that track. The only thing I don't like about this game in that track is one person can be like, "I'm just going to run as fast as I can and end every round as fast as I can," and that's not good for you. You mm -hmm. shouldn't do that. But also, it's not good for everybody. You kind of then make the rounds quicker, or if. if I, well, I as long as only one person's doing that, it doesn't matter if you're playing with four people and one person's that's true. I was about moronic to say, enough got, to leave. Yeah, it's they like, get cool. an extra point and but that's if, it. If you're playing with two out of three people who kind of run to the yes, end, then, yes. then one person might get left behind. Right. But then they'll get more resources, so it doesn't <coughs> balance out because next round they can walk more dogs. You know, so it does it kind of have that built-in balance. The game definitely feels like they thought about dogs first and thought about, okay, it's going to be a game about getting dogs, walking them, finding the things they need, all that and then started putting me mechanisms to that, mm -hmm. which is fine. Unfortunately, I don't really like most of the mechanisms in the game. I think the the walking the dog through the thing and sort of this, this is like parks, right? Yes. Right. It's basically that idea. That works. I think it's fine. It's a little flat, maybe. It's sort of the same stuff every time, but it's okay. Not really, though, because no, you yeah. put out different <coughs> resources and you stuff. You change right, out some yeah. of them, right? Yeah. Uh, that's my favorite part. I thought the bidding was really flat. The bidding is like, I'm bidding one or two. Sometimes it's just the math is too small. When it comes to the bidding, I didn't really enjoy the bidding. I'll buy that. And I, then I, this I, thing down the side over here, you end up with how many dogs? Eight? Something yes, like yes, that? Uh -huh. It's, again, too small. The math is too tight. There are this many breeds. That means I could win some of these with one. And you can catch up to me with one. If I'm at near the end of the game, I'm looking to get some points from this breed part. Literally, I can look around and go, okay, well, one toy dog ties me for most. But I have to get rid of one of these, which immediately means I'm not winning that one. There's no wiggle room whatsoever. It's just way too tight. This is too many breeds. Or the board is too small, like the, the amount we keep. I actually wouldn't mind. This is one of the few games... I wouldn't mind if there was another round or two. <coughs> I agree and I that. could have 12 dogs at the end of the game. Right. I would not mind that at all. Yeah, it just seems like maybe after I walk the dog or something, I should... I don't know. It's just the ones that are face up in front of me are the only ones I'm counting for this seems restrictive. And I don't like that. I like the idea of I walk the same Bernard. I'm banking that. I'm banking this. I'm banking that. I can pick up that stack and be like, ooh, I have like six toy dogs. Is that going to be the most or is that not going to be the most? I think I'm safe with six. But just looking around and being like, mm, I'm losing that, I'm losing that. A single card ties me there. Ties are friendly, so that's the most. Yeah, it's it's too few cards to too many breeds leads to that problem. Yeah, I think I'll, I'll, I'll agree with that. I don't think it bothered me, but I'll agree with, you know, what you said. And it's just, it's it's too spread out. You know, the number of cards are too spread out. But with the bidding thing, I, I disagree. I think I really liked how you're using your own reputation in order to do those bids and you can see you know what you want to go to and mm -hmm. you know and you kind of balance out of how much do I want to put into it how much of my reputation because ultimately it's your points you're giving away yeah, yeah, that's but you good. can also see by the end kind of what your other options are if I don't win this how not only how bad do I want to get it but how if I don't get it I know what else I'm going to do it's not going to be a blind card draw or anything like that you still get something yeah. and you still know what your backup options are you know, so you can kind of plan those different, if I get it, this will be great, I care this much. And I liked that, um, that it was very low, I mean, one to three, I don't think I ever bid over three for anything, you know, I mean, it's, it's, it's kind of that lower range. And so I liked that about it. I think it added more tension 
and more kind of strategy in the bidding. I also tried a uh, strategy in one game where I was like, I'm not going to win anything. Okay. I'll just take whatever dog's left over. You don't win that way as a oh, heads up. Oh, fun fact. Because you don't get any of those. You probably yeah. not have any majorities there at the end. Mm. Right. I think the other thing that, the one that kind of held me back a little bit was the top, the forecast track. I don't think I ever was able to meet the requirements of that forecast track to get the bonus. And so I felt like that was a little bit, you luck into it almost. I liked that, you actually. Know? I thought that was <laughs> yeah, solid. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, these are like little uh, overall powers or abilities. You can look ahead and be like, oh, next turn, this kind of dog is does this instead. These are cheaper. This is different. Yeah, great. Fine. Did you, did like, you ever benefit from it? Yeah, I, I never looked at really, it and I planned benefited. around hmm. it. Interesting. Um, but again, ultimately, my point being, it's a hodgepodge of pieces. Like, th this, I could take a pair of scissors and cut this out. This is one game. This is one. This is one. And this is one. And they kind of went... Yeah, this is good. And then, uh, hey, you know what we'll do? We'll leave a little room right here so we can put the expansion thing, which has a rondelle or something. <laughs> you know what I mean? It just feels like a hodgepodge of stuff. Um, what would you rate it then? Um, again, there are parts I liked, but overall I find it a little flat, and it really, unfortunately, I think is going to suffer from comparisons to other popular, popular games. Uh, I'm going to give it a six. I don't hate it. Um... I'd be happy to play it, and I think you, you guys are probably right that in a, in a bubble, like, given to someone or a family who love dogs, and you're like, I got this game for you, it's about dog walking, they're probably going to be over the moon about this game. For me personally, knowing Wingspan and Parks and other kinds of games like this, it suffers a little bit from that. So I'm coming down to the six. I'm giving it an eight. To be fair, part of that rating is I like dogs a lot. And I like the, I like everything. I like the production of this. I yep. like the concept of it. Walking dogs is a thing, especially if you're walking multiple dogs. Yep. Um, but I also like it for what it is. I look at this as a game that I could see in Target, you know, mm -hmm. and play with people. And I really enjoyed it for that. This, you're right. This is a game I could. If someone likes dogs, oh man, this yeah. is one of the first games yeah. I'll show them, honestly. Yeah, yeah. And mm -hmm. it's they're going to like that. The the people who made it, you know, they like yes. dogs. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and. Mm -hmm. That comes through, and I, I don't mind. You said it's hodgepodge. I think a lot of games are. It didn't feel as disjointed to me okay. as you. I like it a lot. Yeah. No, I, I think so as well. And, again, going in, I love dogs. Um, and I didn't feel – I see what you're saying with the different mechanisms, but I definitely feel – I think what you said was very true, where you can see – the dog walking in it. They like dogs, they understand dog walking, yes. and then they built a game around that. Yes. So and I think because that's more of my mindset, I didn't see the hodgepodge of mechanisms. Those mechanisms fit what they were trying to do. You know, there is a forecast that you have to look at what's coming up. You do have to think about if you're taking multiple dogs on a walk, how do they synergize together? You have to think about who you're bringing in. You have to look at their, I mean, all these different things. There is prestige with certain dogs, you know, that you're harder to walk, but you get more prestige mm. out of them. And, and, and so I think all of those that hodgepodge that you're seeing, if you look at the theme, it it works. So I really, really like this. I'm sorry, my score is 8.5. I think huh. that... So you well, apologize to me. No, apologize to him. Yeah, apologize first. to me, okay? No. It's a six. You know, I just you get said that. No apology. No, no. Um, and I think, again, Dogs. thinking about who this game is for, you talk about it being in par Target, this is one of the first ones I'm going to point them to. And I think that if they like dogs and they like that family weight, I think this is excellent. It absolutely hit what it was trying to hit. It knew its target audience. It knows the theme. And it made the game work around that. Well, there you go, folks. That's Dog Park. Check it out. Woof. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Z Garcia. I'm Camilla Cleghorn. You were supposed to bark, but all right, whatever. Woof. Woof.